All right, good evening everyone. I think we have uh, everything set and ready to go. Welcome to our first virtual roundtable. Uh, I'm Ron Wenzel, I'm the uh, Director of Field Service for the Three Fires Council. And first want to just start by saying I hope that uh, all of you are safe and healthy. I hope that your families are safe and healthy and that your scouting families are safe and healthy. And we really appreciate you joining us tonight for this virtual roundtable. These are truly unprecedented times. And uh, this is our first attempt at, uh, at a meeting this large and with this uh, Global Meet platform. So bear with us a little bit. Uh, we've, we've been working hard on the technology. We think we have everything set and ready to go. We were watching all of you log in. We noticed a lot of, a lot of you wearing scout uniforms tonight, which we really like to see. Some of you in pajamas, I think. But uh, happy that you could be here tonight. The beauty of this platform is we are recording tonight. And uh, we'll be able to post it, so if there's other members from your unit that want to watch this live session later on, they can. And then we'll also have breakout sessions tonight for the Cub Scouts and then a Scouts BSA breakout. And those were pre-recorded and will be posted uh, later on. Uh, we will monitor tonight's uh, chat, so if you do have some questions as we're going through the night, please uh, uh, write those in the chat feature, and we'll try to get you an answer if we can. It'll give us a little bit of that interaction for the round table, which we all uh, covet and uh, wanna make sure that we uh, continue as well. As I said, we'll be recording tonight and then uh, we'll have uh, this live session posted as well as the breakout sessions. To get us started tonight, we have an opening video from Ana Tui, who is our council commissioner. Welcome to the first three district virtual round table ever held in Three Fires Council. First and foremost, I want to make sure that this message finds all of you happy and healthy and that your families are safe from this pandemic that we're all experiencing. But due to this extremely difficult time, there are ways we can engage safely in scouting. Maybe we have to be a little extra creative or maybe a little more modern in our approach, but there has been some great success out there. I have heard of many troops that have been doing virtual meetings virtual merit badge counseling clinics, and utilizing our digital resources that are online. So as we progress through these odd times, you might be thinking, is it just for me? Well, it's for everybody. Scouting has this, this wonderful capability to be a backbone throughout your family. Right now, families need scouting more than ever. We have the ability to give families, both the individual youth in their families and the families, a structured, educational, fun program that offers recognition and rewards at the end. So why not, right? All it takes is a little elbow grease from you and your family to make it happen. It's all there if waiting for you. So if you want to find the digital resources, you can go out to www.threefirescouncil.org and right there you'll find the digital resource link. Um, beyond that, there's other things you can do as a leader or as a family. First of all, if you're doing advancement, make sure you're tracking it in Scoutbook. That's a great way to keep all your records up to date. Additionally, you can do online training. Um, Lord knows we have so much online training that you can never run out of things to learn. Um, also, service hours. There's many things that families can do or individual scouts to get their service hours moving. Things like roadside pickup. I know our family, whether they know this or not, is gonna do a little litter pickup here in our own neighborhood around our lake. I know, right? Who's excited? <laughs> Um, beyond that too, we're also going into our summer where we start planning. So now is a great time for unit leaders to start thinking about succession planning. Who else can we recruit? Which families can we reach out to as we start to build, build our committees and build more support for our units? So that's it for now. And may we never forget how much we love our human connections, we love our family and friends, and may we never forget the true value of toilet paper. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Um, let's uh, get started with uh, just some of our updates on the COVID-19 uh, situation and our stay-at-home order. The Council and uh, National Organization have sent out guidance and, uh, on safety and scouting at home during these unprecedented times. Please continue to follow the CDC guidelines to keep yourself and your family healthy. Now continue to social distance and avoid contact with people who are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Avoid touching your face. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. Stay at home if you are sick. And of course, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. 
With the current stay-at-home order in Illinois, the council has taken these steps. The scout shops, the Norris Service Center, and our camps have been closed until Friday, May 1st. All council and district meetings are restricted to on pl online platforms, just like tonight's virtual roundtable. We continue to plan and prepare for all of our summer camp programs, including Scouts BSA and Weeble's resident camps at Camp Freeland Lesson, and day camps, family camps, and all other activities at Camp Big Timber. Early bird fees for all camps have been extended to April 30. And if we must cancel or reschedule any camp, notifications will go out right away and refunds will be issued. So please make your reservations now. We want to make sure that everyone is registered and ready to go once we get the all clear. We have also started a digital resources page that Anna referenced in her opening on the council website to provide information, updates, and activities for all of you and for all of your our scouting families. Just go to the threefirescouncil.org website and click on the digital resources page which is on the main landing page. Families will find resources for scouting at home and video conferencing options. You will find online advancement opportunities for STEM and merit badges and how to conduct advancement during this time. Families and scouts will also find activities like the 30-day challenge, adventure bingo, and virtual field trips. We have resources from the national organization and we will post the roundtable breakout sessions and this joint session on the page to be viewed when volunteers have time. We hope you enjoy this resource the council is maintaining for you, and please continue to share ideas with us that we can post in the future. Lastly, advancement has definitely been a challenge during this time, but not impossible. Our council advancement committee led by Bob Charles has done an outstanding job of putting together guidance for our units and families to continue to work on advancement from home. Let me ask John Garn right now, our staff advisor to the Advancement Committee, to share a few of those updates. John? Thank you, Ron. Hello, everybody at home. Um, with the scout law, uh, sometimes you hear a 13th point, and sometimes that is a scout is hungry, and uh, especially with Dutch oven cooking, right? But uh, I think in these times, the 13th law, uh, 13 points of point of the scout law could be resourceful. And so um, here's some of the information from the advancement committee, um, also on the digital uh, resource page. First one, um, Cub Scouting. So uh, date to remember is July 31st. And so um, the scouts can continue to work on Cub Scout advancement uh, through July 31st. Um, and also uh, something new, from National is that uh, the Arab Light Scouts can continue uh, working on uh, their badges as well till July 31st, but also parents can sign off on those adventures. That's something new. And so uh, remember that you can continue and, and uh, coordinate that with scouting, uh, scouting adventures with uh, schoolwork as well. Um, on the Scouts BSA, we've got uh, a date for Scouts BSA as well, and that is September 30th and the, the scouts can continue working uh, towards Eagle Scout, and uh, the council now has the opportunity to extend uh, extensions to those that are nearing their 18th, 18th birthday. And um, Bob Charles, uh, in the breakout session, will talk more about this, but uh, those are some dates to remember, and um, the scouts can also continue working on their rank advancements. Uh, that includes time uh, served as leadership, and um, and being active in the troop. So uh, remember uh, September 30th for Scouts BSA and July 30th, uh, 31st for Cub Scouts. <coughs> On to merit badge counselors. We have uh, some workarounds uh, for merit badge counselors and uh, any merit badge counselor that is registered currently and wants to sign up for uh, to teach merit badges can do so. Uh, go ahead and email um, Dave Ripka, and his information is in the uh, digital scouting resources page. And so you can email him uh, those uh, merit badges that you, that you would like to help teach. Also, um, anybody that would like to, to register and is not currently registered, they can send those applications to the scout office. 
Um, we do have an, a new opportunity for scouts to continue their adventure through merit badge, merit badges. The online merit badge courses is uh, up and running, it's live, and they can go ahead and go and sign up there. Uh, sign up on the digital resources page and uh, start their, their online adventures through that. Um, just remember that uh, Scout is resourceful and continue to, to scout on and, and to find ways to, to continue the, the adventure. Thank you. Great, thank you, John. Appreciate that very much. Now, if uh, we were holding our normally scheduled round tables uh, throughout the, uh, the council in, the, in our three districts, we would typically go into our uh, general sessions that we would have every month. Um, this month, we have a couple features for you. We're going to start with uh, youth protection. April is youth protection month, so we're going to uh, handle that and uh, give you some good refresher information on that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about succession planning as well. Now, that's something obviously every unit can use and uh, thought that it would be helpful for everyone tonight. We, we really appreciate the, uh, the work of our roundtable staffs as we uh, started planning for this virtual roundtable. We asked them for topics and information that uh, they were planning. And uh, these were two of the, uh, the topics we came up with to put into the joint session. And then obviously we uh, will have the breakout sessions as well. So April is Youth Protection Month. This is always important. Uh, we definitely should just not think about youth protection in one month a year, but uh, throughout the year. But April is the month we really want to give you a refresher on all of the information. It is always important for us to review our barriers to abuse and the measures that the Boy Scouts of America have put in place to protect our scouts. This is even true during this COVID-19 pandemic and our virtual meetings and communications. It's especially true for that. And remember, our 2D guidelines apply to all online meetings and electronic communication. If you as a leader are emailing, texting, or FaceTiming a youth member or using social media for scouting, you must always copy the scout's parent or another registered adult leader. If you are holding an online meeting or virtual meeting, you must have another registered leader in the meeting. You must safeguard any personal information that you collect in any online medium, and you cannot collect any personal information on any scout that is under the age of 13. Lastly, recording any online meetings involving scouts is not authorized by the Boy Scouts of America. So Youth Protection Month is the time for us to also ensure your youth protection training is up to date. YPT is only valid for two years, remember, and uh, you must renew your training after that. Make sure to check your MyDot Scouting account and make sure that you are up to date. This is a good month to do that. We've also sent out emails to those that uh, may have lapsed in their training and will continue to do that. We should also review the barriers to abuse and do an audit of your unit activities and meetings to ensure that everyone understands the guidelines and is following them in their daily lives as well. Remember our program requirements. Always use the buddy system. The use of smartphones, cameras, mirrors, drones, or any other device in places or situations where privacy is expected is prohibited. All aspects of the scouting program are open to observation by parents and leaders. The BSA does not recognize any secret organizations as part of its program. Hazing and initiations are prohibited and have no part during any scouting activity. All forms of bullying and harassment, including verbal, physical, and cyberbullying, are prohibited. Inappropriate public displays of affection are prohibited. Sexual activity is prohibited and appropriate attire is required at all activities. Remember our reporting requirements too. Adult leaders and youth members have a responsibility to recognize, respond to, and report youth protection violations and abuse. Remember the three R's. Youth protection policy violations. Serious youth protection policy violations or behaviors that put a use Safety at risk must be reported to our scout executive, Clint Sharp. Alternatively, policy violations may be reported to the scout's first hotline, helpline, when the scout executive is not available. I'll give you that number here in just a second. 
Online reporting is also available through our incident reporting portal. Mandatory reporting of child abuse. All persons participating in scouting programs are mandated reporters of child abuse. That's always an important one for us to remember. We are mandated reporters of any child abuse. Reports must be made to law, local law enforcement and child protective services. This reporting duty cannot be delegated to any other person. Reporting to the scout executive or scouts first helpline ensures that follow up can occur for the safety of our youth. Scout executives and, and scouts first coordinate follow up actions. As part of its scouts first approach to the protection and safety of our youth, the BSA has established a dedicated 24 hour helpline to receive reports of known or suspected abuse or behavior that might put youth at risk. So that Scouts First Helpline is 1-844-SCOUTS-1. 1-844-SCOUTS-1. I'll give you a, a place to go to get that number and some more information as well as soon as I'm done. When, when to use the Scouts First Helpline. Anytime you believe a youth has been harmed or their safety and well-being is at risk, and you cannot immediately reach your scout executive or local council, call the Scouts First Helpline. If a youth is bullied because of race, color, national origin, religion, sexual orientation, or disability, and local help is unable to resolve the problem, call the Scouts First Helpline. And then always remember, if someone is at immediate risk, you can always dial 911, and we should always remember that as well. So the Boy Scouts of America have done a great job of putting together resources, putting them on the web, not just for the Boy Scouts of America and our leaders, but for the, the general public and the community as well. So go to the youth protection page at scouting.org and you'll get all the information that I just went over, as well as the Scouts First Helpline uh, to make sure that you have that in your, in your, in your logbook as well. Now I'm going to do uh, turn it over to Zach, who's going to talk about succession planning, our next feature in our joint session. All right, thanks, Ron. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach. I'm the field director for the west side of the council. Thanks for joining us tonight. I want to take a couple minutes and just talk about uh, succession planning and annual planning for your unit. Um, I want to encourage you to still make time while we are in the stay-at-home order to, um, to do your unit annual planning. You can hold a virtual parent and leader meeting dedicated to planning for the next program year. I'm a big fan of the ideal year of scouting. If you are not familiar with that plan or that program, uh, you can Google it and you'll get lots of great resources um, for the ideal year of scouting. Essentially, it's a plan on how to build a program for your scout that is the best program that your unit can put on. And then the second component of it is how to match a budget so that you can fund that program. So part of your annual plan should include uh, leader succession planning. You must ensure that new leaders are always being recruited into your unit. Now, most of our leaders have youth that are in the program. So a well-planned and executed recruitment is pretty much essential in order to get more leaders to volunteer in your unit. Um, but once you have the adults in the door of your unit, so to speak, they need to be recruited to help out and to do things. I wanna share with you five simple steps to recruiting leaders in your unit. So the first one is to build rapport. Make sure that whoever approaches a parent in order to recruit them for something, that that person has a relationship with them, that they have rapport with them. Um, it's always best that people have a relationship when they're going to go ask somebody to do something in your unit. So find that best person that is a friend of that leader or you yourself, make sure that you are connecting with all of your parents so that you can have that rapport. So when it comes time to ask them to help out or to recruit them to do something, you've got a strong relationship with them. The second one is always recruit face to face. Now, I know that looks a little bit different right now, but you and I are face to face right now. It may not be ideal. It may not be what we're used to, but this is a way that you can still be face to face with people. So when you recruit somebody, make sure that you're face to face in some way. Don't do it over just a phone call. Um, 
you know, or a letter if anybody writes those anymore, or through email. Um, make sure that you're face-to-face -face in some capacity so that the person can um, sense your uh, genuineness when you're asking them to do something and that the, the conversation is a little bit more comfortable. The third point I want to share is when you recruit someone, have a specific ask or position in mind. Don't be general when you recruit somebody. When you're approaching a parent in your unit and you want them to help out, don't use general terms like, hey, I'd like you to help with the Pinewood Derby or with the Court of Honor. Be specific. Hey, I'd like you to bring this. I'd like you to build this. I'd like you to do this. People are more likely to say yes when they know exactly what they're being asked to do. On this point, um, also don't, don't recruit kind of by casting the net out. If there are 10 leaders in a room and you are just going to throw out a statement that says, hey, we need somebody to help with Pinewood Derby. Anybody interested? Most of the time, those people are going to look at each other and say, well, I think he'll do it or I think she'll do it. So I won't step up or say anything. And that comes back to the point earlier about doing, um, asking people to do things face to face. The fourth point I want to share is have more than one option in mind when you go to recruit somebody. So maybe you really need somebody that can plan uh, your blue and gold banquet, or you really need an advancement chair for your troop. Um, have that ready for the person that you're going to ask, but then have another ask ready. Um, maybe they say no to that advancement chair, but you also need somebody to help plan the court of honor. Uh, if you have another ask ready that you can follow up with after they say no, there's a really good chance that people do want to say yes, but that maybe just wasn't the right fit for them. So if you have another ask ready to go, they will most likely say yes to the next thing. Most people don't like to say no, and they don't like to say it more than once. So if you have another ask ready to go, downshift into something that maybe is a little bit less of a time commitment or something that maybe would intrigue them a little bit more. Um, I recommend uh, having three things, having three different things that you can ask them. Um, you know, your, your top level thing that you're looking for that you think they would fit, kind of something that maybe is a little bit lesser commitment, and then something that's even a little bit lesser than that. Odds are they're going to say yes to one of those. So you're going to walk away from that conversation with a win, even if it wasn't your first ask. The last thing I want to say is have fun and be positive. It's hard sometimes to ask our peers, to ask fellow parents to volunteer and to do stuff, but if you're positive and you're having fun and they see the relationship that you have with the other leaders in your unit and with the kids, odds are that they're, they're gonna want a taste of that and they're gonna wanna be engaged in that too. So make sure that you're having fun and you're staying positive. All right, now I want to um, turn it over. We're gonna hear from our scout executive and our council president. Hi everybody, Clint Schaff here, scout executive of the Three Fires Council. I want to thank our council president, David Grooms, and our council commissioner, Anna Tui, and the entire Tui family for taking a few moments to say uh, welcome and thank you for being with us on our council-wide virtual roundtable tonight. This is an incredibly difficult time for so many families. Uh, whether you're trying to work from home or school from home, or maybe find yourself out of work right now, or maybe, God forbid, a member of your family is dealing with a health crisis. We well, know we're praying for each of you. Our thoughts are with you all the time. And for our scouts and scout leaders out there, I have a particular message. Now more than ever is a time to focus on the scout oath and scout law. The scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. And as you go about your day, think about how you can take each point of that scout law and apply it to your interactions with your parents, your siblings, your teachers, your neighbors, your friends, and your family. Hi everyone, and thanks for coming out for our virtual roundtable. I can't thank you enough, our volunteers, for doing the things that you're doing in our units, in our districts, and in our committees to ensure that we've got an outstanding program coming up this summer and fall for our scouts. Imagine CBT, CFL, just teaming with scouts, their families, out doing the things that they like to do, shooting, canoeing, cooking, eating burned food, all the things that scouts like to do, getting dirty with a purpose. I, I just am excited for all the things that are coming up and we're counting on our volunteers to make sure that we execute in just an outstanding way. Once we get back out there, our scouts are gonna reap the benefits of what you're doing right now. Now, I also wanna give a shout out to our professional staff. They're still there. They're social distancing, but they're still doing the good work of scouting as well. They're supporting your committees, they're supporting our, our camps. 
Let them know how much you appreciate them. And finally, from our key three, Anna, myself, and Clint, uh, I just have to say how proud we are of the way and the way we execute our programs and the way we're, we're all supporting scouting. We have the best volunteers in all of scouting. I'm convinced of that. We're all convinced of that. And thank you again for all that you do for scouting. Back to you guys. Thanks, Dave and Clint. Uh, really appreciate our uh, our entire key three uh, recording messages for our virtual roundtable tonight. And there's a great message there to uh, to wrap things up. Now, tonight, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have recorded this live session. We'll be posting that um, in a little while. And we have already posted the breakout sessions. Uh, we have a Cub Scout breakout session and a Scouts BSA breakout session. So just like any round table where we would have the, the joint session, then you'd go into your breakout sessions, you'll be able to do that. The uh, breakout sessions are posted on our digital resources page, which is uh, the address behind me here. Um, and the great thing about this is you can, as soon as we wrap up here, you can go right to the breakout session and watch the, uh, the videos. Or you could go check on the kids, watch a movie, come back and watch it later tonight. Or you can do it tomorrow or over the weekend or whenever you like. That's a great thing about uh, some of these virtual platforms is we do offer a little bit more flexibility for your schedules and other members of your, uh, of your units. So hope you watch it. And um, a lot of work went into the, uh, the work on the virtual roundtable tonight. Um, we do have a uh, quick thank you screen for everyone that was involved in tonight. And you can see there's, there's about 25 names up there. And, uh, it was amazing as I started to, to think of all the people that helped to do the breakout sessions and recorded messages and recorded parts of the, uh, the meeting tonight. There was a lot of work that went into it. We need more help with this too. This, is, uh, this has been a bit of an experiment tonight and uh, something we really wanted to uh, put together and make it a good experience for all of you. So we do want uh, your feedback. We want additional help. We're going to continue to work with our great commissioner corps and continue to work with the great roundtable staffs that we have. This is uh, something, even as we get back to a little bit more of a, a normal schedule and we have that personal contact and interaction at our roundtables that we all love, we do want to be able to record those sessions and be able to post them for the people that can't regularly attend a roundtable in person. So this is uh, actually giving us a bit of an opportunity to test out some of the technology, try some different things. And, and as I said, we do want feedback. You know, we, we know we can get better at this. We know there's more things that we can do. We had a lot of ideas and just trying to figure out how we could put all those in place for tonight. Uh, we're, we're thinking about those for the future as well. So again, thank you to the entire group that uh, helped record messages and put, uh, put everything together for tonight as well. And as uh, Dave Grooms mentioned, you know, our professional staff and our volunteer uh, committees are still there. So if you guys need help with anything or have questions, and obviously if you have questions from any of the, uh, the sessions that we've, we've done in this live session, please send those questions in. We will answer them. The staff is there. Your volunteer committees are there to answer those as well. We want to be able to uh, get you the answers you need. We want to support you. Uh, we're with we're with you through this uh, this um, uh, stay at home order, and want to continue to make sure that scouting at home is is vital and uh, used by all of our families. So let us know what we can do to help you. Let us know how we can support you. We really appreciate you joining us tonight, and we really appreciate you being here. And uh, stay healthy, stay safe, take care.